these are eight millimeter films taken by Potomac chapter member Jerry Hott in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Uh, they were transferred from eight millimeter to video uh, professionally in a lab and then re-edited uh, for time and content. And we're doing an audience participation program tonight where anybody can uh, chime in with any information they have uh, about these films. Okay, so we are starting out here with the uh, Fort Eustace Railroad, which was a, an army railroad uh, at Fort Eustis in Lee Hall, Virginia. And basically uh, this railroad had two large looping tracks with a couple of branches around this facility. And uh, they had a junction, an interchange with the CNO Railroad, now CN CSX uh, at Fort Eustis. Uh, this railroad had uh, two Ys for turning trains around. And um, the trains were run by the 774 and 714th Transportation Battalions of the Army until the late 1970s. Um, this uh, railroad had a surprising number of um, motive power and cars. They had 1.8 steam engines, nine diesel electric engines, and 162 coaches and freight cars. And the maximum speed uh, was only uh, 15 to 25 miles per hour on this line. How many miles total in trackage? Uh, I don't have the total mile figure. But they, There's still uh, an operating railroad down there, um, and I believe it's run by contractors. Yes, that, that is correct. It, it is still operational. It, it's run by uh, Northrop Grumman Technical Services. Uh, Wikipedia says 31 miles of track broken into three subdivisions. Um. There, there were. I've seen other video or other movies shot here in this time period. It, it uh, was probably NRHS or other railroad organization events that were organized to uh, to do this. I think, in fact, an NRHS convention had a trip on this at one point uh, about sixty years ago. So this may be what you're looking at is an NRHS trip. Okay, yeah, I have, there was no, I have no indication as to what this actual event was, but uh, certainly a full train there. The Army also ran specials for Armed Forces Day pretty much every year in the 50s up to the mid-60s. So this engine here you're looking at, I guess this is a, one of the yards, the 610, uh, I think eventually went to the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum. Several of these locomotives still exist, is my understanding. Um, they were a standard, they're S, S160, GI Joe consolidations generally, except for that, that switcher, that's a switcher, but um, a lot of them were, uh, and they were built by all three major builders uh, for use in World War II overseas. These were basically export locomotives. They were built to be exported to France and, and other allied countries during World War II. So uh, a lot of them had Franklin poppet valve gear, which is rather unique for American locomotives. Now, of course, this railroad, uh, you know, serviced the base, but it was also used as a training facility, um, teaching railroad operations to uh, military personnel.
uh, there were some training films during World War II that were shot here as well about um, like sabotage in railroads, how to spot and avoid sabotage, that sort of thing. That first squarish coach there, is that one? I, did they have a car like that at Gaithersburg, you know, near the station? I'm trying to see what they were seeing they on did that. at yeah. one point, yes. That, that's a, uh, it's, actually, it's actually a modified box car, but it's a, it's a true, either a troop sleeper or a troop kitchen car. And the yeah. one at Gaithersburg is a, uh, an army kitchen car. Didn't it go to Hagerstown? I believe, yes, I believe that's correct. So this, uh, this particular engine that we're seeing in action here on this train is uh, Baldwin 280-611. Uh, this was uh, built in 1943 and rebuilt in So as Bob mentioned earlier, the, the railroad uh, still in a, you know, I think smaller capacity is, is operational today. Uh, and currently uh, they are operating with two GP10s and one GP16. You can, you can very clearly see the Franklin Poppet valve gear on, uh, on this locomotive. The Pensy T1s also had Franklin Poppet valve gear. Not sure what that is. <laughs> Does that symbol mean anything to anybody? We couldn't figure out what it was. Now, apparently, uh, I did come across a note that said, uh, you know, the forged trains were never allowed to uh, operate on uh, the CNO tr traffic beyond the interchange track. But sometimes with uh, special permission from the base commander, they would have uh, CNO engines come onto the property. I'm not sure why, but uh, I did see a mention of that. There was a National Guard Railroad unit in Connecticut. Do you know if they had National Guard or Army Reservists at Fort Eustis learning this stuff? You know, I think they did. And um, uh, I could check. We have a, a local authority in this area uh, on this railroad, uh, Tim Moriarty, uh, who used to, I think, actually... Uh, was involved in the operation of this line at one point. So I uh, could certainly check with him. I was going to say, ask Tim. He seems to know everything about uh, military railroading. I think he was involved with them in the Korean War. All right. Okay. So um, that is Fort Eustis. And we are going to transition over here to uh, some, some footage of the, uh, the Buffalo Creek and Gauley Railroad in Clay County, West Virginia. Uh, 
I, I might mention to whoever's watching this also that um, there, we noticed some real differentiations uh, when you're viewing this. If your monitor screen is not uh, turned up to an adequate brightness, some of the uh, scenes might appear a little dark. But if you have a slightly higher brightness, the uh, transfer comes across a lot better. I thought there might be more about uh, Fort Eustis, but uh, I spent one or two uh, Army Reserve summer camps there. For sure, the uh, August of 73 and maybe August of 74, I was with the 1151st, uh, 1157th Transportation Battalion. Uh, wait a minute. Well, uh, 1151st, uh, the 757th Transportation Battalion. I was in the 1151st uh, Transportation Company. We were a diesel electric locomotive repair and rebuilding unit. The battalion had two locomotive repair units and two car repair units and one track company. And I know that, uh, I think our track company was really based in St. Louis. And at summer camp, we, uh, we mainly practiced working on equipment. I changed a lot of uh, brushes and uh, I can't remember what else I really did. Uh, the track company did work on track. It was a nice place. Now, does anybody uh, know what this event might be? This is, um, well, the, uh, the Buffalo Creek and Gully, uh, the service ended on this railroad in 1965. Um, it was a primary coal, primarily a coal hauler to the uh, B&O interchange at Dundon. And um, I think, I believe the line ran 18 miles to uh, Whedon, West Virginia, the Rich Run Coal Mine. Uh, it served a uh, sawmill at Swandale. And um, it had, like many short lines, uh, a very uh, complicated history, being retired twice, being revived, retired, revived again. Uh, last operated, uh, was last operated by a company uh, from 95 to 99. Uh, this obviously is some um, large rail fan event. And you saw them, uh, looked like they were changing the uh, number plate on one of the engines there. Does anybody know if this is Dundon?
Well, the Shea has a Georgia Pacific logo on it, so that probably didn't belong to the railroad itself. All right. Okay. Um, the next little segment we've got up here um, is some footage at the Eli Thomas Lumber Company in Fenwick, West Virginia. Um, so this was really in the middle of... <laughs> In the middle of nowhere, in the middle of West Virginia, this was to uh, to the west of Cass, and um, this railroad only serviced uh, the lumber company area there. Didn't have any trackage outside of the physical plant of the lumber company. Uh, and interestingly enough. Um, there is not very much rail, uh, railroad information on online about Eli Thomas Lumber Company on Wikipedia or anywhere else. It's very hard to uh, find information. Um, I know that this company was started by uh, uh, two people. Uh, the last names of Eli and Thomas, where the Eli Thomas name comes from. Uh, it operated uh, up until uh, 1969, was dismantled in 1969. I believe they had a connection with the B&O. And uh, I, this is some interesting footage because, uh, you know, it uh, was not a tourist line. This was an operating sawmill. And uh, Jerry was apparently able to get in here and uh, get some footage of uh, the logging operation, logging, uh, loading the logs up onto cars. And then we're going to see some uh, footage of the logs uh, being dumped from the cars into the, the waterway, the river, I guess, that uh, fed the plant sawmill. Did they run out of trees? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what, what happened to them. Um, I don't know whether it was, it was running out of trees or just a, a financial uh, numbers didn't crunch, you know, eventually. I think there are a couple of books out on this railroad uh, and, and uh, obviously that's where you'd have to look to get the background. There is not much online. But again, this is some uh, very interesting, uh, unique footage.
Boy, that looks like uh, potentially hazardous work. You gotta you really look out for your hands and feet. Not an OSHA approved site, huh? That's for sure. They dump the logs into a pond to get rid of the dirt and uh, on the logs that would screw up the sawmill, from what I understand. I'm thinking that uh, crane on the train there is probably steam powered. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's a steam crane. Yeah. They probably powered the sawmill with scrap wood and sawdust. Now, this this uh, little segment you're seeing here is uh, was at the tail end of this reel of film, uh, and you're just going to see maybe 30 seconds of uh, this engine shoving some passenger cars. But <laughs> Eli Thomas never had any type of excursion, so I'm not sure if this was a role he started in, I can't read the name on the engine there. I don't know if this is Cass or somewhere else, but it definitely, uh, it's not Eli Thomas. Oh, that's definitely early Cass. Okay. Isn't that back on the road? Isn't that the first grade crossing out of Cass? That's the first grade crossing out of Cass. Okay. Okay, uh, all right, and uh, we're moving on to uh, the next uh, segment, and this will be the, uh, the East Tennessee and Western North Carolina Railroad, commonly known as the Tweetsie. Some, some people say that's an acronym for the name of the railroad. Some people say it's the name that the whistle, uh, the sound that the whistle made on the train, so I don't know what the story is behind that, but uh, again, we are probably in the uh, late 50s, early 60s here. Uh, this was originally a three foot narrow gauge railroad built in 1866 for mines in Cranberry, North Carolina. Uh, there were a number of industries along this line, uh, mainly concentrated around Johnson City, Tennessee. Uh, this railroad had dual gauge in places for interchange. Uh, they hauled a number of uh, products over the year from ore to pig iron to lumber. Uh, and they did have uh, an operating passenger service at various points in the railroad's history. Again, the railroad went through a number of ups and downs um, and it was restarted uh, as a tourist line in 1957 uh, near Blowing Rock. Again, 
Yeah, and Bill, I don't know if uh, OSHA rules will let you get away with uh, <laughs> that type of uh, operating today. <laughs> uh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> So uh, all of the uh, remaining rails on this line uh, were removed uh, in 2012. And uh, another one in the long line of uh, railroads uh, being turned into rail trails. Uh, Jonathan pointed out this became a Southern Excursion Engine 630. Yeah, this, uh, this 207 here uh, was an Alco, built in 280, built in 1904. Guess in service till 1967. So I believe that, that's up in Elizabethton. Yeah, if anybody knows locations here, um, I we we do. Yeah, let's see. Well, jo Johnson City was its uh, the main area where its industrial uh, tracks were located, but uh, I think we got we have a couple of uh, scenes in Elizabethton, Tennessee. North American Rayon was located in Elizabethton and yeah, uh, Denver right. or something like that. Huge plants up there. So they service those. Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, there is a, a couple of scenes of that coming up. That tank car for the locomotive? Uh, hmm, not sure. So I believe Southern, this engine I says Southern 630 belongs to uh, um, Tennessee Valley, right? I think that's correct. I, I, Paul, I remember, I think I read somewhere that if, at some point they actually had two engines painted up in Southern green. <laughs> well, the 722 and the 630 were two consolidations in the Southern excursion program. So we have some cab views here. Again, I'm not sure what town this is. I believe that's Elizabethton also. Okay. More importantly, we have some street running. There was a propane, propane offloading facility down there somewhere in the, they ran through the streets to get to. Yeah, that's downtown Elizabeth from there. So Jerry managed to get a cab ride in regular service. This was probably taken in 1956. I did see a uh, 56 Chevy backing out of the parking lot. Well, Rudy, I, th I think it's actually you know, some of those cars are early 60s. So this is probably in the early 60s at some point. Yeah, that, that one um, red and white van, I think, was 
was after 1960 or around 1960. Nice little water tank there. He's crossing Highway 321 right there. Okay, so yes, there's the uh, the mill, the factory you were talking about, the Bemberg factory. Um, so this was a, uh, a mill that produced rayon, uh, which was kind of like a silk substitute. Uh, and that actually was operational uh, till the uh, mid-1980s. I believe it was owned by a German company. That last grade crossing scene looked like there was like a 63 Chevy in it. He's coming back out now across the highway 321 again. Now I'm thinking uh, this is probably one of the units uh, that worked in the uh, mill there. That's a fireless. That's North American Rayon Corporation. Oh, okay. Which is the same as Bimberg. Bimberg was the earlier name and later on it became North American Rayon. Yeah, they banned riding the uh, footboard in the mid 1970s. Now, now this sign says, "Kill that impulse before it kills you. Your survival instincts may prove dead wrong." <laughs> The coal cars he was hauling, you saw in there earlier, all went into the rayon factory to power it. Now, th this is interesting here. There are no crossing, grade crossing signals at this road here, and there's nobody flagging the road. <laughs> He's just going right across the road. That's now a four-lane highway through there now with a center turn lane. He's on his way back to Johnson City now.
Okay. All right, so uh, our last segment here uh, is the Virginia Blue Ridge Railroad. And this ran from the uh, Ty River Depot in Nelson County to a uh, connection with the Southern Railroad in Manassas Mill. The railroad was originally built to haul chestnut tree wood. <laughs> that was until the chestnut blight kind of wiped out that product and then um, served a number of quarries after that. And um, service ended in, on August 1st, 1963. Looked like a little bit of a hard couple there. Oh, if you caught that first scene, the, the, one of the first scenes, it looked like he was kicking cars with the steam engine. That one was better. As I mentioned earlier, the uh, service ended August 1st, 1963. Um, Ex-Army ex 060 number nine pulled the last train. Uh, the line was uh, officially abandoned in 1981. And again, has been in the process of being converted to a rail trail.
This is uh, where they had an interchange with the Southern. Looks like he's got an early uh, portable uh, telephone uh, communication system there. That looks like a brand new paint car out of the shops. That was the Southern uh, crew that had the radio. And uh, this is the, uh, I guess, freight depot at Thai River. They had, a, they had a fairly modern uh, bay window caboose for you know, railroad operating steam that late. Yeah, I, yeah, you're right. I was going to say that's a that's a pretty nice uh, piece of rolling stock there. Now, I'm not sure where this is. It is obviously, uh, it's got to be by a mill somewhere. This is a small engine uh, pushing a slag car, dumping slag. Um, and you'll, you'll see one really brief scene just before this uh, clip ends uh, of a mill somewhere. Any, anybody happen to know where this might be on that line? It, it's odd. Most American tank engines are not side tanks like that. That looks more like a European style tank engine. Yeah, the L must be, uh, the L in the circle must be a clue. I'm just not sure uh, where it's leading at the moment. It could be Lionel. <laughs> I would guess. And I'll just stop it there. There obviously is the, uh, you can see the blast furnace at this mill, uh, wherever it may be. All right. And that is it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, John. I know right. Jerry Hunt was, he was really partial to Buffalo Creek and Gully, but we got to see some of his other favorites too.